What's up everyone, this is Tony with Journey Crypto. We do have some huge things to go over in this video, some very important crypto news and some huge data suggesting that a supply shock is coming to Bitcoin. So if we do get any major news over the next couple weeks, I definitely think we're gonna be breaking major uh, resistance from 40 to $42,000 Bitcoin. We are seeing many altcoins surging today as well, some up over 30%. So we're gonna be going over a lot of huge things in this video. Before we get started, I do appreciate if you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell to be notified when I make new crypto videos Monday to Friday and sometimes on the weekends. All right, guys, so I'm trying out some new things on the channel to hopefully improve the overall quality. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions, that's appreciated as well. So the main topic of today, I do want to discuss a supply shock coming to Bitcoin. If we do have any major news break over the next couple weeks, I think this could be huge for Bitcoin and really give us that push of demand we need to break major resistance of 40 to $42,000. So I do want to talk about this, some huge data here that does suggest uh, we're going to be on an upwards rise throughout July. So the crypto market's holding up pretty strong over the past few days, pretty much flat here, moving sideways. We do have Bitcoin down a couple percent. Everything was looking pretty good this morning. We even have some altcoins up pretty huge. The top gainers list here uh, for uh, the past 24 hours. Uh, something interesting, we do have the gaming NFT projects really surging, like Axie Infinity is up huge, breaking all-time highs at $14 now. Decentraland Mana is back at $0.80, cents, up 24% today, and the Sandbox Sand, uh, one project I'm huge on that does have a smaller market cap out of the three. Uh, which i have been dollar cost averaging and I, uh, this game will be launching by end of year so that's also up around 20 percent was up around 40 percent earlier today so bitcoin has really been struggling here over the past week to break upwards and test major resistance things were looking good coming out of that dip but now things aren't looking too great especially with all this news about regulations and the crackdown on binance so uh, we are going to talk about this um, a lot of experts are claiming we're going to drop again and test the high 20,000s, even as low as 24 to 25 thousand dollar bitcoin before we start really moving upwards again uh even peter shift today saying we're going to drop to ten thousand dollars or below but of course he's been saying bitcoin's going to zero for a very long time even um during the last bear market stating people buying uh bitcoin around three thousand five hundred was a horrible idea and as you guys know we were over 10x from that in a short period of time so keep in mind anything can happen in the short term we are at mercy of manipulators here and that can move the markets any direction i do believe we will be testing major resistance though at some point in July 38 to 42 thousand dollar Bitcoin if we do break out of that that'll definitely be a great sign we're headed out of the accumulation phase so a lot of people do believe we're headed out of accumulation uh, there was an article on this yesterday stating that uh, we may only be midway through with the Wyckoff accumulation which does show we would have another retest of 38 to 40 thousand dollar Bitcoin before dropping again and testing that spring of around 26 to 28 thousand dollar Bitcoin and that does line up with a lot of experts are predicting testing around 25 thousand dollar Bitcoin before we start uh, moving upwards again towards end of year all right guys so quickly going over this important Bitcoin data that does suggest a Bitcoin supply shock could be coming something similar to what we saw in quarter four of 2020 when Bitcoin did break twenty thousand dollar previous all-time high for the first time since the last bull market Market. So um, I do believe this is very possible here. We do have the Bitcoin supply shock ratio showing that uh, the supply is shrinking on exchanges. Bitcoin's availability on exchanges is declining with respect to the supply line in blue. So as supply is shrinking and demand is rising, that's only going to be a good thing. Uh, supply and demand economics that does show the price of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will be on an incline unless we get some really bad news that causes more selling pressure in the markets, which is very possible since we do have regulations uh, coming into play here. And I'm going to do an entire separate video on regulations and everything going on with that. So something very bullish, in my opinion, new active users is still rising. Glassnode portal revealed that the Bitcoin network has been onboarding an average of 32,000 new users every day, which is a new high for 2021. You would think that the high would have been when Bitcoin price was peaking around $64,000, but it's actually peaking right now with Bitcoin in an accumulation phase around $30,000 to $35,000. And if you compare this to the previous peak of the last bull market, this is nothing similar where uh, we saw a a very sharp drop in active users. Everyone panic sold at that time and got out of the markets, entering the bear market. So this looks nothing similar 
Um, this is not the structure we are experiencing right now compared to the last bull market. New users are taking this opportunity to buy the dip. They're coming in at the highest rates seen in 2021. Again, another example of on-chain data showing divergence to the price action. So last of the bullish data in this article, Bitcoin withdrawal transactions hits one year high. This is definitely very bullish as well. So uh, the Bitcoin net outflow transaction count from spot exchanges crossed the 60,000 mark for the first time in a year. Meanwhile, the total number of Bitcoin deposits to spot exchange wallets decreased to below 20,000. Both of these are bullish in my opinion. So uh, with spot exchanges inflow transaction count dropping, that means there's less uh, cryptocurrency being sent from spot wallets to exchanges, which means people are going to be dumping their cryptocurrency. While the opposite spot exchange outflow transaction count means people are buying crypto on the exchange and sending that out to hold long term. So we have Ethereum's London hard fork expected to launch on August 4th. I do think this is a good thing. This gives a little bit more time for demand to build for Ethereum. I am pretty bullish on the crypto space towards end of July, and I do think Ethereum will be doing better than Bitcoin. So I will be selling some Ethereum if we are peaking towards the end of July and uh, buying back in on the dip if we do uh, retest that spring around $25 to $28,000 Bitcoin. But regardless, this is going to be very bullish for Ethereum in the long term, making some necessary improvements to the Ethereum blockchain. So really looking forward to that. We have some other major network um, blockchain upgrades coming by end of year as well, like Cardano Gogan mainnet. And then we do have... Uh, Bitcoin Taproot, which will bring smart contracts to Bitcoin, which is pretty interesting. So more massive news today, a huge step towards mass adoption. The UFC inks a $175 million sponsorship deal with Crypto.com. The deal terms were not publicly disclosed, but according to sources, it's worth $175 million over the next 10 years. So that's a pretty long contract of 10 years, and that's massive exposure that the crypto space will be getting from this. So as part of the agreement, Crypto.com's brand will appear on fight kit items worn by athletes during competition as well as clothing worn by the training staff. Additionally, Crypto.com has acquired the right to USC's newly launched sponsorship category known as Cryptocurrency Platform Partner. So very interesting. This is definitely a huge push towards mass adoption. The more things we get like this, the more people that are going to be aware of cryptocurrencies and the bigger the crypto space will grow as a whole. So this is definitely huge in my opinion. Uh, the more things we see like this, the better. So next up, hedge fund giant Marshall Waste to reportedly dive into crypto. We have uh, had news of a few hedge funds uh, announcing getting into cryptocurrency over the past couple weeks. So uh, Marshall Waste is reportedly still uh, discussing the size of its new digital currency related portfolio with potential investors. So the more hedge funds we see getting into crypto, the better. Uh, a lot more institutions and companies will be getting into Bitcoin as well. This will help uh, drive retail demand and mass adoption in general, which is why I'm still very bullish on cryptocurrencies for end of 2021. So uh, next we have Visa reports over $1 billion in crypto spending in H1 2021. Payment giant Visa will continue connecting the crypto economy to its network of networks to support the broader digital transformation of financial services. Visa, uh, one of the biggest payment processors being in cryptocurrency is huge and they're working on their own Bitcoin services as well. So very interesting when this and MasterCard rolls out with crypto related services. We also have PayPal getting into uh, cryptocurrencies heavier and possibly Apple looking into this also. So more massive news, LA Payment Network to offer crypto access and NYDIG partnership. The partnership will allow Allied Payment Network to make a Bitcoin allocation for its corporate treasury. So another company holding Bitcoin on their balance sheet, great news in my opinion. Currently, we only have three companies that hold a large amount of Bitcoin on their balance sheet, being Tesla, Square, and MicroStrategy. So just those three companies pushing Bitcoin over 60,000. Imagine where the price of Bitcoin will be when we have 100 companies, dollar cost averaging and buying Bitcoin and holding this, taking it out of circulation, or even 1,000 companies doing this. Uh, this is definitely the scenario where Bitcoin can hit $1 million further down the road, which is why I'm very bullish on Bitcoin and cryptos for the very long term as well, not just the short term. So some very interesting news here. We do have the first bank ever to be offering Ethereum to staking. Signum becomes the first bank in the world to offer ETH to staking. So uh, pretty interesting uh, with Ethereum powering the exponential growth of decentralized finance applications, staking is a compelling choice for long term Ethereum investors also seeking attractive yields. So we're getting a lot of crypto platforms already offering this for people like Binance and other platforms where you can just stake your Ethereum with them and not have to run your own node and uh, really take the difficulty out of it. 
So very interesting if we start seeing uh, banks and other services start offering staking to offer investors high uh, passive income, APY. So next here, uh, last for today, NFT sales tops 2.5 billion in the first half of 2021. People are saying NFTs are dead. This is far from dead, having over $2.5 billion in volume. And um, I do believe NFTs are only getting more popular. There's been a lot of NFT projects coming out in the last couple months here. One of my favorite being the Board Ape Yacht Club and um, their new Board Ape Kennel Club as well. So NFT sales in June alone have eclipsed those for the entire first half of 2020 on the OpenSea marketplace. So the NFT space is very tricky and uh, you really have to have an eye for this to pick projects that are going to be profitable. So you can't just go out there and buy any decent looking NFT and expect to make profit in the long term, uh, especially with these ones that don't know how to create scarcity for the project. And they do have to be appealing with growing utility and growing demand in the project as well. These are all things that Board AB Yacht Club hit, which I, is why I do like this project. They do have celebrities getting into this as well. And uh, their NFTs are uh, do make for great profile pictures. We're seeing some celebrities on Instagram changing their profile pics to Bored Apes. So definitely projects like that, getting in early on those type of projects and uh, being able to determine which type of projects will have rising demand in the future is very hard, especially with so many different NFT projects coming out. So you do have to be very careful. And this is more so for collectors than it is for investors, in my opinion. I do think a lot of people are better off just staying in cryptocurrencies if they don't understand art um, and how art appreciates with time and scarcity as well. So if you don't like the NFTs, there's no po uh, point in buying it as an investment because more likely than not, it's not going to go up in value. Over 90% of NFTs end up going down in value because they don't uh, meet these requirements of growing demand, growing utility, and appealing NFTs. So just be very careful with that. But I do think NFTs in the long term will be growing. You just have to pick the right projects. And I will share these uh, type of projects when I personally find them. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found it useful. Let me know what you guys think about this new video style in the comments below and share this video with anyone else that may find it useful. I'm uh, definitely getting more bullish on the crypto space. I think uh, if we aren't out of accumulation yet, we'll definitely have some sort of uh, good bounce here in July, possibly testing 40 to 45 thousand dollars. So it will be a good sign if we break above that, but I'm not um, betting on that at this point. I do think there will be some more accumulation for the next month to two months, which I will be dollar cost averaging through. And as we saw with that Bitcoin data, uh, new people getting into space are also accumulating at these lower prices. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.